Yeah. So here we go with our NFL. We're going to break down the AFC West and South divisions this week. We did the AFC East and uh, North last week. Yep. Andy, I'm going to pass this over to you, and let's uh, get into this segment. Right. All right. Let's get started. We're going to start AFC South first, though, Chris. Yes. You weren't here last week. I assume you took the time to listen to the podcast. I did. But just so you know, Browns and Bills Bills are going to combine for 15 wins next uh, this season. (laughs) 15. You heard it here, and I'm pretty excited about that number. Uh, All right. Let's start. We're going to go AFC South. Let's talk Texans. A lot of people are thinking, all right, the Texans are just a quarterback away and this and that, you know, and and that's my big question, guys. So they had a great defense, and J.J. Watt was hurt. Um, They've shown that they have a defense capable of winning big. Do they now have the options at quarterback, do you think, um, to – uh, to actually go the distance. And I'm not talking just make the playoffs again. I'm talking make some serious noise there. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll be the first one to say, you know, I was pulling for Watson to be the number one quarterback out of this draft. I know I, that wasn't a popular pick. There were some people saying, no, that's, uh, I, I don't think his game's going to translate into the, into the NFL. Mm-hmm. But I honestly think Watson is going to be someone that, of a, of a it's, it's, he's, I think he's going to be a, a really good asset to, that, to the Texans. Okay. Is he ready this year? That's a tough one. Rookies seldom in their first year really take off. Yeah. Savage, I thought, had some games that I thought he looked very, very strong. Well, I, I guess the point, Chris, is he better be ready because Savage can't stay on the field, and if they're going to make noise in the playoffs, like their top two quarterbacks are going to have to be ready to carry this defensive-powered team yeah. uh, a lot further than they've been able to. So, Yeah. yeah. I, I did uh, a little bit of digging on Watson, and out of the scouting combine, mm-hmm. uh, there was an article that was written some time ago, and they talked to numerous scouts across the NFL. Here's just a couple things that came out around Deshaun Watson. One is how poised he is as an individual. Mm-hmm. Number two, he never makes the same mistake twice. Okay. And the third thing that is a common theme with him, this kid knows how to win. Yeah. And that's the biggest thing that a lot of pro players lack is that knowing how to win a big right. game. And he's proven that. Here's some things that I think we need to look at with Houston this year. And, and, and again, this isn't just Houston, but this is that division. They've got a fairly easy schedule. Um, yeah. Yeah. They play not only their own division, but they also have games against the Chiefs, the Browns, the Rams, the Cardinals, and 49ers. Mm-hmm. Those are all teams with losing records from last year. Sure. That's going to play in the favor of Houston this year. We talked about that defense. Clowney, six sacks. Uh, Mar- uh, Marcellus, 7.5. McKinley, uh, five sacks. That's 31 sacks that had. Over the last four years, J.J. Watt has averaged 16 sacks. Yeah, crazy. You put... J.J. Watt, with that unit, sure. it's unbelievable what can come out of this team this year. All right. I guess my only comment there is, like, everything you just said about Deshaun Watson has been said about so many quarterbacks. Yep. Uh, oh, but, I, but, 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 the, but fair. All right. But so, I saw this kid take Clemson over Alabama okay. and beat them, you know, for the national championship. Johnny Manziel. Is quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Throw it there, quick so. Just a quick but I, Not only did he beat him, though, how he came back. Yeah. That's yeah, what I like actually, the most. Yeah. Listen, I'm not taking anything away from the guy. I yeah. hope he plays this year, and, and I hope he, he does good things. Now, as a Browns fan, I, I kind of hope they have, like, three wins because we have their first-round pick. But that we, I think we all know that's not going to happen. Yeah. Um, bef- let's move on from the Texans. But real quick, if this Texans team – really has that I mean like you know you're adding JJ Watts 16 possible sacks to that defense again can you pick up Tom Brady and plop him down with the Texans today and consider them immediately the Super Bowl favorite yes oh yes 100%. yes but I don't even think you need to I don't think you need Tom Brady no I I mean look at what Peyton Manning did with the Denver Broncos with their defense and they didn't have half like they didn't have the production that yeah. this defense will have with JJ Watt I think, I think Chris is right. Savage is expected to start. He'll be on a short leash. I think Watson will be in as the starter, if not by week one, by week four. And uh, I think Watson can take him there in his rookie year. All right. Oh, you guys are really high on the Texans. Let's move on to the Colts. Oh, I'm I'm angry at this team because I feel like they're <laughs> wasting 
a once in a generation quarterback, uh, just with stupid personnel decisions and ridic- like ridiculous moves all around. Yep. Andrew Luck, we don't know if his shoulder's completely right or not. They're playing it off like he's going to be ready, but there's a chance this guy doesn't even start the season. And you guys know how they got Andrew Luck in the first place was Peyton Manning going down, and mm. I think it was Curtis Painter or something like that. <laughs> yeah, Curtis yes. Painter, that's it. If Andrew Luck's shoulder is not right, guys, if you look at the rest of this team and that defense and everything, like, is this a potential number one draft pick team again? The, the only – I mean, Andrew Luck hasn't even started throwing the ball yet uh, in yeah. 2017. They, they haven't tested his shoulder out yet. I mean, the only guy you look at on their offense is T.Y. Hilton. You yeah. talk about wasting a quarterback. How about wasting a talented wide receiver? T.Y. Hilton had great stats uh, uh, over the past couple of years. You know, last year he he, received, he caught the ball in 91 times, six touchdowns for 1,400 yards. Yeah, That's pretty good with the offense they had last year. Yeah, Andrew Luck, ever since Deflategate, has not been the Andrew Luck he was coming into Deflategate. Yeah, and I mean, it's hard to pinpoint exactly why that is. I mean, the guy's been running for his life. Yes, he's been holding the ball a little too long. He got hurt. He got banged up. We keep hearing he's been playing with injuries and so on. So it's hard. Once you've seen the guy do what he was doing, once you've seen him process the information as an NFL quarterback, it's hard to imagine that he's not the real deal. Mm. And and when you look at what's been going on and the GM getting fired and and all this ridiculous stuff with this team, the trade for Trent Richardson. I mean, they've really blown this, uh, yeah. as far as I'm concerned. Now, let's say he is okay, though. The way we've seen him play last, can they even make the playoffs with Andrew Luck is the question because the team's only gotten weaker. Yeah. And so, older. I well, we'll talk. We'll on. talk about. We'll talk about our our predictions here in a second. Okay. But um, I I don't see big things for the Colts in this division. I think I think Andrew Luck, really going by his last name, he needs a lot of luck. He needs his his offensive line is is, is horrendous. Mm. Uh, I don't think any of the personnel that was taken in the off season, they I don't think they plugged any holes. They need right. they, they need to have much, give him much more time to be able to do what he does. Because really, if he if they would have concentrated just on the offensive line, I think that that's that could have been the solution to be able to like a good offensive line will will help that. Obviously, that's that's uh, that's that's so yeah. so obvious. But if if he has a little more time, there's he's going to make uh, a lot of his players look really well. And the fact that they haven't stared at the offensive line just again just points out what are they doing? Who's mm-hmm. building this team? And there, was, and there was guys available. There yeah, was something yeah. like that. Brandon Albert should have been like that. Mm-hmm. That should have been looked at. Yeah. You know, Jacksonville picks him up, but they yep. picked him up for hardly anything. Yeah. I think that should have been a, like a, an option, but yeah, it's true. This, and the salary caps at play, and, and we'll talk more about that. Jags guys, now every every year, Jags are the sleeper team. Oh, they're going to make some noise, and they never do. And I, I'm very, I'm a pessimistic guy when it comes to these teams that have never shown me they can they can pull it off. So I've I've written off the Jags for two years now as that splash team, but they've beefed up their defense even more. Um, they had a really good. Defense that Jalen Ramsey kid, or, or from from last year, and so on. Um, but can can uh, can the offense actually help them finally get over the hump? Let's say this defense this year is twice as good. Is the offense going to be able to get them over the hump? And when I say hump, I don't know what to say there other than five hundred. Maybe. Mm. Do you want want me to go first? Or? Yeah, go ahead. Go, sure. Uh, when you look at this team, and, and I got the I got the opportunity to see the Jaguars play in London uh, when we went to see the Bills play against London there, mm-hmm. and I was actually very impressed with Blake Bortles. Um, this kid has a lot of talent, uh, and and you look at what he's done. Uh, Robinson, Hearns, and Lee as the wide receivers there. Yeah, they had decent stats. Uh, you know, they had they had. They had good chemistry as as far as a quarterback receivers go. Yeah, he he Blake Borders always has a lot of pressure on him, but he's a big man. We talked about Ben Roethlisberger. Yeah, last. he he has a similar frame as Big Ben. Absolutely, he's a big guy. I, I was surprised how big he was when I saw him uh, live. The biggest thing that I think that has killed the Jags in the past couple of years is not the quarterback, not the wide receivers, but the running backs. Let's look at 2016. T.Y. Yeldon, he rushes for a total of 465 yards, one touchdown, uh, two fumbles. 
And Chris Ivory ran for a total of 439 yards, three touchdowns, and five fumbles. Yeah. Running backs has been their biggest need, Mm -hmm. and they addressed that this year in the draft by drafting uh, Leonard Fournette, who we were picking to go very high in the draft, if you remember. We picked him for them, yeah. We did. So, to me, Fournette is the key of this team this year. It's not not Blake. It's not – they've got the pieces. Yeah. They needed a running back to come in and help give that quarterback time in the pocket by running the ball. I think Fournette is the key to the offense this year. I compare this a lot to the Miami situation with Tannehill. When Tan when Miami took the, the took a big step last year, mm-hmm. what happened? The running game, mm. yeah, right. The running game improved. And I think this is a year they have three bruisers back there. They have you know with Fournette, I think he can carry a game to like next to, like, like he could be literally the, the top running back this year without yeah. a doubt. Okay. Then you got the bruisers behind them. I think sure. that, I think they're going to wear down defenses. And they got some. They they have great passing options. I think yeah. it's going to be a good team. So good op. yeah, and so first point is just on the running back thing. So you are right, but at the same time, you can't commit to the running game when all you're doing is playing from behind. Uh, and the Jags sure. have been known for that for two years. Blake Bortles has been a viable fantasy football quarterback because all they do is chuck it for the entire second half. So I think it's a combination of now having a real deal running back yep. and beefing up the defense that right. might actually work. The other thing I wanted to say though, guys, like you guys know me, I'm a I'm a huge NFL fan, a way above average fan, I would say, and I and I know the game. But that being said, as somebody who didn't play competitive football, I, I find myself sounding ridiculous when I start talking mechanics and footwork and stuff. Blake Bortles is the first quarterback that I've ever been able to look at and go, what is going on there? <laughs> the guy has the, the longest, big, roundup delivery that he did not have as a rookie, uh, his like his foot's flaring out like he's about to slice the ball so hard if he's playing golf that it's going to come back at him. He's like like I'm looking at that guy and even I will say they got to fix that. What is well, there, there's no question. I mean, he's still a young kid. He's not, yeah. you know, he's not in his 30s. So there, there's still some coaching that he has to go through there. But I've seen this guy make the throws. Yeah, I've yeah, seen I him agree. make the. He's got the arm. He's got the ability. I think having a running game is going to help this guy's development. There's no question. We're going to overplay that, that point, but I think that's what it is, though. You see a quarterback that's developed some bad habits. Right. He's had to scramble a lot of times. He's had to try to make <clears> – <throat> that's not his game. He's a pocket passer. He has some wheels, but he doesn't he, – he's not a guy that can extend plays. He, ha, he has, but I think that's a, a, a negative result that's happened with his game yeah. with some of the throws he's doing. In two years now, the offseason narrative has been he's going to fix that, and now he can't. So, okay. Um, or, or at least he hasn't been able to. And the last thing, guys, and and you're, you guys are going to be annoyed with this, right? But Doug Marone, right? So you guys, you guys have the gift of hindsight now, okay? You guys know Rex Ryan is the idiot that the rest of us already knew he was, mm. right? Um, I'm going to be honest with you. I liked Doug Marone. I wanted the Browns to get Doug Marone when he left, you know, Buffalo. So looking back... As a Bills fan, do you wish Marone had just stayed? Um, and do you expect him? You know, you guys are bigger. You, you guys know him a little better than me. Is he? Is he a guy that you think can help get Bortles where he needs to be now that he's in Jacksonville? I, I honestly think it was a good move for him, <clears throat> like a better move for him. And I think he was humbled by the move. Honestly, the the move that he tried to pull the the power play in Buffalo. That was an idiot move. Mm-hmm. You don't say to get all the reins after a, after a few seasons. You can't ask for that. Well, he, it was his first season as a coach. Yeah, that he, head that he coach. Had, but that he asked for like something that major. I think that there's no way we would look even more of a laughing stock if we gave. Okay, you've got the whole control. You know, you just came from Syracuse, had a really good, you know, turn that 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 college thing around, and now here you go. Here's a whole range of the Buffalo Bills. No. Well, here's the thing. I mean. When he was in Buffalo, he was always looking over his shoulder. And I, I think that we're, we're not mentioning the impact Doug Whaley had on Doug Marone's tenure as a head coach. Yeah. Right. Doug Whaley, I, I, I've learned, you know, over the past year, what a cancer he's been in that locker room. Sean McDermott, right off the bat, something was taking place there, and they canned Whaley. So I don't know what was going on with Whaley and Marone back in the day. When they first hired Marone, I liked the fact that they were hiring a tough coach. But that being said, that coach quit on his team. He walked away from an organization. That is not who I want leading my team. Yeah, that's a fair point. That's a fair point. Period. 
All right, let's move on to the everybody's favorite, apparently, in this division, uh, the Tennessee Titans. They've done a lot of good things in the offseason. They signed a lot of weapons on both sides of the uh, of the field. Uh, most of the national media has anointed Marcus Mariota as one of the hottest young quarterbacks. My first question is this. He's been in the league for two years. He's yet mm. to finish the season. Mm. He's yet to finish the season. Is this guy injury prone? Now, again, it's only two years. Is he injury prone? Um, if he's not, do you guys really think – like when? Are you guys seeing what everybody else is seeing? Because I'm not. I'm not even sure I would take this kid over Tyrod Taylor for one season right now. And you guys know how I feel about your quarterbacks. So. Yeah. No, you got, you got to go with him. <clears throat> the way his trend's going, he's one of the hottest hottest quarterbacks in the red zone. And now he's got one of the biggest threats as with uh, Decker in the red zone. you you, you got to go with him. I, I know he's, he's been showing some signs that way, but when he's on, he's on. Yeah, yeah. What do you think? <laughs> I, I'm with you in the fact that I didn't know a lot about this kid. I've I've only seen the Titans play a couple games. Yeah, he's got great mobility. Kind of reminds me of a young Russell Wilson. Mm. Um, but you you look at his lineup. You know, Chris brought up Decker. Don't forget about Rashad Matthews. Delaney Walker's the tight end, and he's got a running back named Demarco Murray. So mm. he's got pretty good talent around himself. Yeah. You you bring up his health. That that is the number one concern of any team, their quarterback's health. Yeah. Right? So um but I will tell you this, in looking at a few stats, in two thousand sixteen he played three more games than uh the previous year. Yeah, that's true. He cut his interceptions from ten to nine in in playing three more games. And he boosted his Q, uh, QBR numbers from five fifty six point five to sixty five point two, so he's on the rise. He, he is, yeah. he's he's going into his third year of his contract. I expect good things from this from this kid, and and we'll get into it in a few minutes. But you look at um, perception around, you know, fans of the NFL. Yeah. They're all on the board right now with the Tennessee Titans yes. to win this division. Yeah, yeah, I hear you, and I just need to see it, and I haven't seen yeah. it yet. I've seen this team lose to the Browns two years. Like I've seen them lose to the Browns. I've seen yeah. Johnny Manziel beat this team with Marcus Meredith playing quarterback. So yeah. until I see it, I'm, I'm not I'm not signing off on it. So let's talk. Let's let's close the the book here on AFC South. But uh, so who wins the division? I think I think I know what you two are going to say. Uh, so who who do you got to win the division? If I were to bet, I, I go with, with uh, I go with the Titans. You're going Titans, but okay. my but my my feeling is is the Texans are the ones that are, you got to watch for yeah. how they played against New England in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. I just keep thinking about that that defense how they were all over Tom Brady and without Watt. Now, uh, okay, so you just said the key words here. They made the playoffs last year and played against Tom Brady with no JJ Watt. And Brock Osweiler, quarterback. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Now they got uh, now they got wow. JJ Watt back, and they've got you know Sh- Watson. If Watson's playing come playoffs, there's no nobody that's going to touch Houston in this division. Okay. Houston's going to come out on this division for sure. I got Titans coming second, Jags and Colts in the basement. All right, I struggle with this division because I don't believe in anybody. I don't. I don't believe in Marcus Mariota yet. I don't believe in the Jags whatsoever. I don't believe in the Colts organization and what they can do for Andrew Luck. And the Texans. Well, I, I have to go with the Texans. I just want to point out though the fact that they played. They played Tom Brady last year with Brock Osweiler. They also had to beat the Raiders with a rookie quarterback starting his first game in the NFL I, I ever it. in the playoffs. So yeah. <laughs> that's fine. Now there's ifs. There's ifs. Yeah. So it's a big deal. Um, again, I'm not. I'm not overly enthused about their quarterback situation either. I'm not sold on Watson. Um, that being said, though, I have to go with the Texans yeah. for for the division. Awesome.